everyone. Thank you for being here um, to my session about automatic security updates. And before we start, I want to introduce myself. Something's not working. So, who am I? Um, my name is David Pacassi Torico. I'm a part time data scientist at a Zurich agency called Leap. Um, I do Drupal as a freelancer, so I do development, coaching, consultancy. Um, I'm part of the Drupal Association Switzerland since last year in October. And I'm a co-organizer of this event, so I hope you're having fun and a uh, good session so far. So, does anyone in the audience remember who, the, uh, who were there, uh, who they, uh, where they were on March 28th? You don't remember? Pardon me? <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Uh, let me show you one picture, maybe now something, some, some, some bells are ringing at some people. I'm seeing someone not uh, saying yes. Do you remember where you were? Yeah. Where were you? In the office. And doing what? Doing security office. That's correct. <laughs> um, this is a screenshot of uh, my Twitter feed. So. People were just waiting for the Drupal Get on 2, for the patch release, the security release of Drupal. And I was at the pub, <laughs> waiting for everything to happen. And a while ago, I don't remember um, if I heard it in person or if it was a blog post or just a discussion in an in a issue, but someone said like this, wouldn't it be nice when you wake up in the morning, you get a coffee, you receive a text message on your phone that says there are Drupal security updates available. Mm. Say okay, drink your coffee, make a toast. Ten minutes later you receive another message saying that all security updates have been applied to your website. And say okay, job done. And I'm asking myself, is this only a dream or you know, can we achieve this? And I had this idea in mind, since Drupal Europe actually in Darmstadt, uh, like I had some concept in my head how we could solve this more or less easily. I just never had the time to actually develop it. And um, at Drupal Europe I was actually creating a new country module called file management, so I was focusing on there. And since then I was doing other open source stuff. But for Drupal Mountain Camp, I said to myself, okay, David, you have to provide a first proof of concept, a first working proof of concept of automatic Drupal security updates. So I just did it. And I'm already apologizing for my code that you will see later. Um, before we dive into our, or in my solution, my proposal, the idea that we're talking about is not new. Um, you've heard everyone about the automatic Drupal security initiative, uh, which are doing the automatic updates initiative. I'm sorry. Um, there are a lot of discussions there. Some of the discussions involve like putting Drupal core in a sandbox, running the updates, and if something fails, abort, otherwise apply the updates. Um, there has been a Drupal core issue since 2014, so five years ago, um, with a lot of comments. If you want, you can go to that link and you will see all the comments. Um, and like I said, there have been discussions and blog posts and meetups about this and even some proposals. Um, for example, one X and Internet has another proposal on how they would solve um, security updates. They have published some scripts on GitHub. You're free to check them out. 
and let's continue with my solution or my proposal. So, in order for the automatic updates to be automatic, um, you need two things. First one being uh, some kind of continuous integration or continuous deployment. Um, it doesn't really matter what you use if you use Jenkins or Circle CI, if you use GitLab CI, you just need something like that. If you don't have this, then you can still use the script, but it wouldn't be automatic. It, be, it would be only on request when you run the script. And you need a Drupal installation with Composer. I hope that by now most of the people switch to Composer. It would be nice. So when you set up your environment for your website, you probably have a production environment with the master branch. And it doesn't really matter how many pre-production, staging, or development environments you have. But what you will add to this environment is a new one called update. The update environment will have its own URL. So let's say you have uh, www.mywebsite.com and then staging mywebsite.com and development mywebsite.com. You would add a new domain called update. You can change it, but my proposal would be update.mywebsite.com. Uh, and this is actually the environment where we will run the updates on first, because um, I don't want to run the updates on the production automatically. Um, I hope you are writing tests. doesn't matter if it's uh, visual testing with regression or p-hat or whatever, but you should have some kind of automated um, testing. And what I want to do is I want to clone actually the product. Oh, actually, let's go to the next step. <laughs> so my idea is how automatic updates could work is like follow. Whenever you run the script, and in the late game, this will be a cron job. So you set it to run every hour or something like that. Um, so the script checks the information about all installed projects on the production system. <coughs> and by projects, I mean modules, themes, distributions, everything that is coming from Drupal.org. Now, the second step would be to access the Drupal API from Drupal.org and get the releases for the projects you have installed, for example, paragraphs. And then you check if there's any release of paragraphs with a security update that you don't already have. If you didn't find any security updates, the script aborts or finishes without doing anything. Otherwise, it would sync the database and the files from production to its own environment. So it's basically a clone of the live website. Then you run the updates with Composer and do Drush up db, drush end up, and run all the drush commands to update. And then you would run your tests. If the tests would, would be uh, successful, you commit the changes, and um, your update environment is optimally pointing to the master branch. So as soon as you commit the changes, your continuous integration, continuous deployment process would get triggered and deploy the changes. Any questions so far? Yes? Have you made step four part of your script? Uh, no, it's a placeholder till now. <laughs> Um, it would be very easy if you have, if you're running the update script on a different server than uh, your uh, update environment and the production environment, because then you can only work with uh, Drush uh, site aliases. So you can use Drush to DB sync, to database sync, and to, and to file sync with rsync the, 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 the files. Even though I would not recommend it at all. That makes the last year script like it can take you for hours. If you have a large database and 
huge amount of files. Mm -hmm. In our case, for example, it would last like half a day to a day mm -hmm. until that is done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the beauty about this um, is that you should do this as, co as mo uh, the most configurable as possible. Um, because not everyone is running the same tests, maybe not everyone runs tests. Um, you shouldn't care about what CI, CD you're using. Um, so this is just a first proof of concept for like smaller websites. If you have 100 small websites, it should mean no problem. But yeah, of course, uh, you, you may have a website which has like a 30 GB database. That's absolutely uh, possible. There are sites like that, Drupal sites like that. And for those, um, you would have to define yourself of how much of a clone you want to have from, from the master environment. Because most of probably you only need like maybe one gig of these 30 gigs because you, the other ones are just images from products or something like that. So you, you, you need to define yourself for yourself what data you need. And of course, it's in your own interest that you, uh, you, you don't want to um, get uh, downtimes on your mass, on your production, because you're cloning stuff from there. So yeah, that's very individual. But good, good question, good thinking. Um, any other questions so far? OK, let's continue. Uh, demo time. I hope it will not crash like uh, the Windows Microsoft presentation, the infamous one. So I'm going to show you So these are two sites that are basically the same. Um, one is called Update and the, the other one is called Live. And there has been recently um, EU cookie compliance security update for those who, who uh, followed um, the security updates. So these sites are using an old version of the EU, EU cookie compliance module. It's version 1.2. This is the this is the live site and this is the update site with version 1.2. Okay. So let's Okay, so I just SSH to the web server where I have the project for the automatic updates checked out. And I'm gonna run this little script called update.sh and hope that this module will get updated. Please ignore the composer warnings. Um, what, is, what the script is doing now, it is uh, retrieving the information from the Drupal.org API. Okay, we can see that he um, updated the EU, uh, EU cookie compliance module from 1.2 1, 1 to 1.4. And paragraphs too, because they had a security issue too, recently. And he tried to push...
because I had some changes. Okay. Uh, in theory, it would have pushed. <laughs> I'm still working on it. Uh, let's see if he really updated it on the update environment though. So let's go to cookie compliance version 1.4. Um, what buggers that it didn't work. But I can show you the code for it. Okay, um, so this is the update script that you've seen before. The project itself consists of three PHP files and this bash script. And it receives some basic, very basic configuration from a dot environment file, where you, for example, can set where your PHP um, binaries, where your Git binaries, etc. Um, so first of all, it would retrieve with Drush, um, it would receive all the installed modules and themes, and it would save this one as a JSON in a file called pml.json because it's going to be processed by a PHP script later. And it also retrieves the Drupal core version and writes it in a file called core.info. Afterwards, it would run the update, the PHP update scripts. We're going to get them afterwards. And if there are any updates, security updates, um, first of all, it would reset its um, Git so we don't have any conflicts. This is the part where I said I'm not doing it yet because um, just for a matter of demonstration, I'm just having everything on one host. But here you would either uh, sync the database and the files via Drush if externally or um, with some server commands if it's on the same server. Afterwards, you would rush the updates this, in this update file is actually all the composer update commands for all the modules that have, that have to be updated. I'm going to show you, uh, them to you in a sec. And the rest should be pretty straightforward. You do an up, up da, um, update database, etc. You export the configuration. That's also important because some updates could have um, some updates on the configuration you have installed. In the end, it would add every, every new file and commit it with the comment automatic security updates and push it to your repository. That's basically it. 70 lines, more or less. Um, And let's check for the other files. So this function is basically the most important function. It calls uh, Drupal.org, API D7, because that's where, we, where the script gets the data from. And if it's a contrib module, um, yeah, first it has to retrieve a project node ID. So every project on Drupal.org has a node ID. And when you want to retrieve the releases for that project, 
you cannot do a query like give me all the security releases for the project paragraphs. That doesn't work. You need to have a node ID. And before we can run this, we actually need to run this, get project node ID. So it would call the same API, just a slightly different. I'm filtering here by the project machine name. So for example, paragraphs or web form. And then I would retrieve a node ID. And in order to not always uh, have to retrieve this node ID, I also um, store it in a cache file. So I can reduce the curl requests that we are doing to the API endpoint by 50%. And with this node ID from Drupal.org, I can actually query for project releases. And I'm only checking for releases that match my version. So for example, if I have web form in the version 4. Point, or I think it's 5, 5.1, it will check if there are any updates on the Fiverr, on, on the 5 um, 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 release. Because I don't want to do a security upgrade to a new minor or major version. In, for those who are not very familiar with Composer or with like how the version numbers are built. Um, like when you have a version 1.2.3, uh, the first one is the major version, the second one is the minor version, the third one is the patch version. The patch version, if this increases, it's only, um, it's only bug fixes. There are no new features, there are no API changes. So you're basically safe to always do patch updates. Nothing can break. However, if you do minor or major updates, there can be new features and or API changes. And this, to, to update this um, is a little bit more, it's not complicated, but you can run into serious trouble if the maintainer of the project didn't think about some edge cases. Um, this is, for example, the reason why I stick with, with my Drupal core version. I can actually show it to you what I actually mean. Um, Um, so this is a composer JSON file of one of my projects or the project that you've seen. So what I mean is that as soon as Drupal 8.7 comes out, I don't want to update it to it uh, directly because um, minor version means API changes. There have been some some issues when you update to a very new. Uh, minor Drupal core release. So I want to do it manually, so I define it like this in my composer JSON file. Um, of course you could write instead of 8.6.star <coughs> just 8.star. Then he would upgrade it automatically from 8.6 to 8.7. I wouldn't recommend you do doing that. And you see also for all the contrib modules I stick with their minor version because Config ignore, for example, is now on the uh, two point um, star release, which means they at at one point there were some API changes, and these API changes could actually mean that, for example, you have to install additional contrib modules because they split up logic because they thought, okay. Uh, it's getting too big, we have to start separating. So most of the times it does need some manual attention. You don't want to just upgrade like this. This is the reason why I stick always to, to one branch. And when we are talking about this, just a recommendation if you are having a module which, is not, which does not have a stable release yet, 
stick to the exact beta and or alpha version that you are using. Because as long as a module is in alpha or beta, it can have API changes. And if, no, if you are not very careful when updating this, they may break your site. Wait for a stable release and then you can work with a star or with the, uh, the other sign. Last but not least, whenever possible, don't check out the dev branch. Um, it's always recommendable to, you know, to, to, to um, apply the patches uh, like this. And let's say you are using a module that doesn't have an official release yet. So you have to get your, uh, the project from the dev branch. Then please um, identify the commit ID, the commit hash in the composer JSON file. Because if you don't do this, when you do a composer update, it will always get the latest dev. And as I said before, uh, with beta and alpha, as long as it's on dev, there can be huge changes to the module, very huge changes. So, just uh, some recommendations from my side. Um, you've seen most of the logic. I quickly want to show you the cache files that uh, are being written, I'm not sure. I think best is if I show them to you on the server, where I run the scripts. Is it readable? Okay. So, this is the root of, of the project for the automatic updates. And inside there's a cache folder, which is which has um, a git keep file, and then um, I've added it to git ignore. So changes here don't matter. Um, you've seen you you see here a lot of NID files and some names that are must be familiar to you. So I told you before um, if you want to query the Drupal.org API for project releases in can do it by machine name from the project by, by, by the node ID. So in order that I don't always have to do two requests, I save the node ID from the machine name. So for example, the Google Analytics um, project or module has on Drupal.org this node ID. And I save it here. And these are all the contrib uh, projects that I have activated in my installation. So the more modules you have enabled, the more uh, node ID files you will retrieve. And the other one is the core information file. Here it's uh, basically just um, written what core version you have installed currently. And with that we can return to the presentation. And this is basically it. So I've shown you a short demonstration on uh, two sites. Unfortunately, the git commit and git push didn't work. Uh, it worked this morning in another branch. Uh, um, I have to check what, I mean, it's just a proof of concept. It's by no means don't use it on a production side, but um, I wanted to show mainly that it's possible to have automatic updates. And while the code is surely can be incre uh, increased or uh, can be uh, written better, I, I want to get opinions on this. Like, what do you think about this approach? Would you say, could it work? Or would you disagree? Why would you disagree? I don't want. The main reason is that I don't want to spend hours doing something that in the end no one will use. Well, if I use it, it's good for me because then at least I use it. Uh, but I mean, it's on GitHub. This is the 
This, by the way, the, the, the link to the, to the project, ATSU stands for Automatic Drupal Security Updates. So have a look there on the files. Um, yeah, well, what's your feedback? I think it's a nice approach for, I think all of us know the problem with the updates to run them um, all the time. Um, personally, I was hoping to have also something for the minor versions, but as you said, it's more difficult. Or for minor versions, like, can you give an example? Yeah, also the, what you said, like if it's a uh, one point something that it, go, it goes to 2.0, that you not push it, but create an environment where the update is done. Mm -hmm. And perhaps even, I don't know, can you retrieve the change logs from Drupal.org and put them on the side so you can get, okay, now I have the, uh, my update environment running. You have like another uh, site where you see, okay, these modules were updated with these changes. So you could check all that stuff and yeah, sure, it's, it's then again manual work, but at least it, it gets done regularly and you kind of just have to check it. But I don't know about the experience of the others. Um, that's it. Yeah, I mean, you, can, you could extend this um, on, on different directions. You just need to hear where the tensions are, where, the, where some potential is in. And I think that you actually get the release notes. I just want to be sure though. So what I'm doing now, I'm getting the note ID of the EU co uh, cookie compliance module that had an update recently. And I'm going to query the Drupal.org API with this EU co cookie compliance. And now I'm getting here the releases. For example, this one, 8.14. So the reason why the script knows that the release is a security release is if you are a module monta a project maintainer, you know, when you create a new release, you can check the checkboxes. This has new features, this has uh, security updates. So when you check this checkbox for the security updates, it actually gets linked to a taxonomy term. And I'm just, uh, just um, looping through the releases, looking if there's a release which has this taxonomy term. So again, if you're a module mon maintainer, and you do a new release of your module with security updates and you didn't check the checkbox, bad behavior <laughs> in general. Um, so every release has here a body field. And the body field is actually what you were um, asking for. It's what the module maintainer writes. So there are some module maintainers which use tools to have it pretty. So they list like every issue that has been closed since the last release automatically. They don't have to do it manually. There are tools for it. And then that would, you would ex exactly see, okay, this changed, that changed. And if the tests are running and you see, see this, yeah, you could do even minor upgrades. That, that, that's true, that's possible. That, that could be one direction where we can go with this project. The possibility is here, we just need to do it. <laughs> Yes? It's a very good example because this security update broke half our sites. They uh, did something to stream manipulation so that it gets es escaped in foot level. And um, half our sites were broken after this update. So um, if this would have been done automatically, I would have more problems after this than without this. So my question is can we get somehow this, like, how critical the security? Um, currently not, because as I mentioned before, you only have a checkbox. And also, it doesn't really say whether you are indeed affected by the security issue. <coughs> For example, the paragraphs also the, or this release, uh, you were only infected if your content uh, administrators had access to actually change the settings. In my case, for example, I have this module installed, 
but the client doesn't have the permission to change the settings. So I wouldn't have been uh, affected anyway, but this is the information that only is written, that it's no taxonomy. There's, I've, it would be very difficult to provide that information as well for a machine, I think. Um, generally, if you, you said that you updated some sites and they break, at least then write tests. Yeah, and uh, we do it locally. I'm just saying. Um, oh, okay, cool. If this would happen, um, automatically it would mm -hmm. happen. If this is why I, uh, why I only want to commit stuff once every test has been successful. This is the step. This is, uh, I can show you the code quickly. Okay, I'm not going to zoom in a closer, but here's the to-do, work in progress, let's run our tests. And if any of them fail, abort, because you don't want to break your website. Um, but I see what you mean. I mean, since Drupal 8.5, there have been two core updates that broke some sites. One was something taxonomy term related. The other one was some Drush, uh, was something related to Drush. It was very uncommon, and for one of the issues, there was a second core release within like two hours. Very uncommon. And when I was writing this update script, I was thinking, ooh, you know, such things could happen in the future again. Maybe I should only care for releases that are at least older than four hours, something like that. But actually, now this is just... You, you are just uh, uh, fighting with the with the symptom, while you should fight with the with the with the with the root of the problem. Um, it's it's wrong that your your site breaks when 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 you when you run a Drupal core update, a patch update even. Um, so <coughs> delaying updates is just being uh, longer insecure. That's a short idea that I had that I out of that then I said no this is the wrong way and the the right way would be actually to support the security team either maybe speak with your company say hey look these guys are doing an amazing job but they need some funding to have or maybe manpower and that would be the right way to ensure that Drupal uh, that future updates don't break anything but delaying the security updates, no, that's, that's not a solution. But like that, you also, you would have to trust on the maintainer that he writes tests for the things he changed. And if you did not do a test for it, it would, even though committed. Yes. Um, for the front-end part, you are very safe when you do a clone of the master of the production if you use uh, visual regression testing. Uh, for those who are not familiar with it, basically it would make a screenshot from the, web for the, from the website with PhantomJS, and then do it another screenshot from the updated website, and if there's any pixel that changed, because maybe an error message or something is not being rendered correctly, it fails. So with a little effort, it's a low-hanging fruit, with a little effort, you can get huge benefits. It doesn't actually, uh, but for the backend part, you're correct. Then you would have to write your own tests, even for that module, or contribute and add tests to the to this contrib module. That would be actually the Drupal way. So everyone benefits from it. Create an issue, submit a patch, and let's hope that it doesn't take six months until it gets into the project. Uh, yes. There's also the service called the Rock Guard, who does something similar and um, offers like a trigger for some CI composer to install when for a module there is uh, security. So they also offer uh, like how critical it is, like the number from 0 to 25. Mm -hmm. so you can say it's more than 20, just push to production, I don't care if it's in place. Um, 
if you can also learn all this, why did you decide to go compete manually with people to call API and not with something like Profiles? Um, I didn't, uh, from the vendors that I checked, like most of them would be a platform as a service providers, um, they would require that you have some kind of hosting or contract with them. And I just wanted to make something that everyone is able to um, use and configure how they are building their website. So I don't want to enforce people, you should go to this provider or that provider, I think. Uh, we need some competition, and um, I am aware of this. I mean, for example, some some of these uh, platform as a services vendors, when there's a security issue, for example, with uh, with an, with uh, with some AJAX request that can be malformed, what they would often do is um, they would block this request in the firewall before it even gets to the Drupal instance. So. It would, it, they actually patch Drupal for you, but not on Drupal level, on network level. So that's a cool thing, and if it, I mean, you're paying for that, so uh, you should be happy to use it. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you that your site is still not affected because it just needs one mistake in this network rule, and then you can bypass it. So the most secure thing is, you know, to have the updates and not just. <coughs> do some network rules filtering. Any more questions or feedback? Um, what I want to do um, shortly after the presentation is I want to create some GitHub issues on the project to retrieve feedback on which direction we can go. Um, if you have something in mind, maybe later today, in a week or whenever, um, Please feel free to create issues to discuss things and create pull requests if you think that you can enhance something. Um, right now, I'm, I have three PHP files. I don't have any release, whatever. It's just a proof of concept, which didn't even work finally. It worked at, at, at one point, though. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but my goal, my long term goal, is really to, to have um, to, re to have releases for this as a project that you can include in on your servers to get these auto updates and um, I think we I mean for example with the initiative that uh, is going on from Drupal to Torque there's a lot of politics and discussions and um, yeah you should Drupal should be for everyone and but it's difficult because what's 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 everyone you can do it for everyone. For example, WordPress has secure, automatic security updates. And uh, what they do is they would just run, get the updates and apply it to the web server. Um, if you ha are using version control, then um, the, the, your grid branches have basically has modified files. They don't think about this. And also, it can break your site because they are not running tests properly. Um, if you Google for WordPress updates, screwed my website, you will see some, some, some mad posts there. So, question is, for example, I said here, the automatic updates only work when you are using Composer and uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment. So I'm actually excluding all the other people, but not because I don't care about them, but just out of simplicity, because it is, you've seen I have three fu PHP functions and 70 lines of bash script, and I have something running. And if I want to take care of the orders too, then it's going to be a hell more complicated. Okay, with that, uh, thank you for your attention. I look forward to get your feedback later. Maybe even if you contribute to the project, that would be awesome. Spread the word and enjoy your break. <laughs> <laughs>